So this piece is Tame Buzzard Line by Richard Long and it was commissioned for Roche Courts and the main idea of this piece was to mimic the transient journey of a buzzard flying from the old home oak tree to the ash tree we see behind us. I think what is quite intriguing about the work when you first are introduced to it is because you kind of discover it from behind a green wall and you just see this kind of theatrical um, stark image of the sharp silhouette of the um, ash tree and then the very strong, initially strong sharp lines of the work itself. But then actually when you come and interrogate it, come up closer to it, you're playing and looking at the work, you see the much more natural formation, which I think is quite an interesting way of building a relationship with the viewer and then the artwork itself. Yes, and um, on that point, the idea of the environment and the transitory nature of it, it's very important in this work. As you can see, there are, there are weeds and there are plants growing throughout the cracks and the folds of the flint. And that's a very important point because it demonstrates the ephemerality of the piece. Yeah. Although it does have a clear permanent quality to it, there is that eph ephemeral transient nature and that mimics the transient journey of the buzzard. I like that idea of the temporal nature of the work so I think the presence of it feels very important, especially that intimate relationship where the distinction between the individual and the actual work itself kind of starts to be blurred because you're looking, you're a part of the environment and a part of the actual na natural world itself. Um, which is really beautiful and really important, especially following lockdown and that kind of limitation of interaction with nature, which I feel almost starved of. So being able to actually be here and looking at the work and interacting with the work feels really important, a part of our development as human beings as well. Yeah, definitely. And although one of the first things I noticed about this piece is the way in which it contrasts with the landscape. Mm. So we see that this flint stone, it contrasts very much with the smooth meadow Although, when you look close to it, you realise that this is local flint. Mm. This is from the environment. So that forms this really interesting interplay between connection but also disconnection mm. with the yeah. environment. I think also talking about the flint, I think it's quite interesting seeing each form. They're very individual pieces, completely unique. So it's that idea of rejecting the unity of more man-made structures. But also that individuality, I guess you can talk about how it mimics our individuality as human beings it kind of replicates almost a stream of carcasses, like a, a burial site. And I guess you could play with the idea of the buzzard being a bird of prey and the predatory nature and the destructive nature of nature, as well as the kind of ephemeral beauty and the um, kind of gracefulness of the landscape itself. Yeah, and in terms of its aesthetic, I think we have to appreciate the value of the line, not necessarily just as a geometric form or a start and an end point, but also as an experience in itself. As we were walking around it, we took in this multi-sensory experience. We heard the rustling of the leaves, but we also heard the birds in the trees and we could feel the tactility, the rough angularity of the flint stones. And I think that really is important in embedding this idea of the presence of this piece. So Richard Long was a Zen Buddhist and he was inspired by the idea of Satori which is the heinous and the nowness of an experience. And this is fundamental in the appreciation of this piece. Yeah, I think that's quite an interesting idea of that presence and that idea of nowness, because what he's doing is making permanent a very transitory and fleeting moment. So that idea of flight being quite fast, it's not something that you necessarily would capture, but for him to solidify it so strongly, I think is quite an interesting relation to then how we as human beings feel a need to make our existence permanent as well. So that idea of all the infrastructure that we're building, um, inscribing our names into history, graffiti tags, um, walling cravings, it's that idea of this is our existence, this is who we are now. But as you're saying before, um, the sculpture being made of very natural materials, there's still that sense of ephemerality. So this, yes, it's a, a very permanent sense of work in the kind of rock formation, but actually the weathering, it will shift and change and grow. Like our own state of nature as human beings, we will die, we'll come back, if depending on how you believe life <laughs> regenerates. But there's the idea of our own ephemerality then looking at the work and we're confronted with our lack, our lack of permanence and endurance within the world that we're living in now. Yeah, definitely. And this idea of the line is also important because you have to look, you have to look alongside it. And there we see, at the end of the line, we see an ash tree. And ash trees often symbolise regeneration because of the shedding of the leaves and then the regrowing of the leaves. 
and then when you look towards this side of the line, we see an old home oak tree, and they symbolise permanence and longevity because they have a lifespan of over 400 years, a very, very long lifespan. And as we're walking down the line, we appreciate the present time, and we realise that we're caught between three triads of time, like a trinity of time almost. And that's very important because, like I said earlier, the satori, the nature of that work, that enhances the experience and also what you take away from the sculpture, whether it be to be more respectful with the natural world, to be more transient with the natural world, or whether or not just to appreciate more. Yeah, I think the idea of the triad of time is really interesting because it's tying into the idea of the cycle of life, that we are part and parcel of nature, that everything is growing and moving and evolving and, and developing and that there's yeah, nothing actually is permanent. Maybe we are just completely in a transitory state for our entire eternity. And I think that's quite <laughs> a humbling experience, but also quite a beautiful notion. Something that I also find really interesting about this piece is the diversity of both colours but also forms. So some of these rocks have holes in them, for example. Some are different in colour. We see ochres, we see greys, we see blues almost. And I think that is symbolic of the diversity of the natural world. Yeah, the individualism in it as well as the collective nature. I guess you can talk about our own way of forming civilization. We're individuals, but then very much part of a community, either whether that is in the UK or just the wider world collective. I think it's quite, quite a nice um, connection to the human and the natural world. We are part and parcel of that. We're not separate. And I think to add on to the idea of the line, something important about this work is that although it may seem like a perfect line, there are broken sections. Mm. We see some of the rocks falling out of the line. And I think that also suggests maybe the lack of perfection in the natural world, the lack of beauty in some sense. Yeah, I mean, the idea that not everything is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Richard Long definitely um, has a much more honest approach to the natural world. So like, like you were talking about before, there's, there is a slight lack of beauty in this where the kind of quite jagged carcass-like formations of the rocks and the bird of prey and the idea of destruction Nature isn't a romanticised piece of literature, like it is a very real, very organic and very terrifying but also grounding environment to be a part of. And I think there is an argument to be made though that the brokenness of the line could perhaps be human's fault because mm -hmm. Long assembled each and every one of these flintstones himself. So perhaps it's not nature that's imperfect, perhaps it's human endeavour that is imperfect. I guess it ties then into the idea of environmentalism as well and Long's philosophy and politics around our relationship with nature and our destruction of nature. And I think that feels quite important very much now with the idea of climate change and the rising temperatures. Um, yeah, very much a reminder of our, our own impact on the world that we're living in. <laughs>